Welcome to episode 45 of the Dealers Compressed Podcast. My name is Paul J. Daly. It's the last podcast of the year. It is Christmas, and all I want for Christmas is clarity. I don't want a lot for Christmas. There is just one thing I need. It's a special Christmas edition. If you're watching or listening to this podcast on the day it's released, that means it's Christmas. That means you're home, you're with family, hopefully you're doing something good. And I'm really thankful and honored that you would spend a little of your Christmas with us here and with me. Hope you opened a lot of presents, gave your kids presents, ate food, probably in a food coma by now. You got your fat pants on because the jeans just aren't fitting very well. There's so much to talk about this year. Um, it's really strange for it to be the last podcast of the year. I mean, we just hit so many milestones over the last 10 months. It is weird to think our first episode was in February of this year, meaning that we've only been doing this for 10 months. And the momentum that has built over that 10 months, like if you would have asked me 10 months ago, where do you think you'll be with this podcast? Well, actually 10 months ago, it wasn't even supposed to be a podcast. It was just a video series that I said, hey, this should really be a podcast. Um, so there's just so much to be grateful for at the end of the year. And I, I hope that, you know, while you're looking back over 2018, you can think of the things that happened. And most of them or a lot of them were probably unexpected things. And that really is what life is all about. We don't usually get to choose what happens to us. We can only choose how we react to it. And one of our reactions this year was this podcast. So um, let's talk about some milestones um, of 2018. So for speaking engagement, um, you know, talk about, I think it was episode 37. We had Oli Gardner on, uh, was speaking at Driving Sales Executive Summit, and that was really cool to be able to bring the message of brand-first marketing to the automotive industry um, in a way that we could connect with people and kind of move the ball forward. Um, we were featured on Daily V, on Gary Vaynerchuk's Daily V. We were featured on his podcast um, and, and his other social media channels. So if you don't know who Gary Vaynerchuk is, we will link him up below. And as many of you probably know, we're part of the Vayner Mentors program where we have a close relationship where we work with them and they're helping us grow our business. Um, so that's incredibly notable. That did not exist at the beginning of the year. Um, we made a ton of new friends and got to talk with old friends. Uh, Brandon Wilkinson, James Orsini was joined us in uh, episode 36. Uh, AJ Amex, recent episode last week, uh, just brought some fire with emotional intelligence and organizational health. Um, Jonathan Hakes was amazing. Someone I've known for a long time, but just a super sharp thinker in automotive and auctions. Um, there are also a lot of notable points. So that was not all the friends we met or had on the show, but we had more. And I guess some of the notable points, well, there's an episode and that's the episode with Matt Weinberg. And it was one of my favorite interviews of the year because he was so energetic and he came up or he didn't come up with it, but he shared with us the word when he asks people to explain or define how they would define their perception of an automotive dealer. And he came up with one word and the way he says it and delivers it is just amazing. My favorite answer, by the way, that I ever received was suspect. And I think it's the perfect word and just how people perceive them. And just the way he delivered it and his energy was amazing. Um, back in episode 23, we talked about the way Carvana is kind of capitalizing on the perception of automotive dealers and what they're doing from a branding and marketing side to really push that message forward based on the data that we have, all the dealers have, and they're just capitalizing on it and uh, executing to it. So we talked about that, also what dealers can do to combat that, which, of course, if you know me and you know our ecosystem, I'm saying you need to get serious about developing your brand strategy and positioning and then executing to it religiously. Um, we talked about, you know, back in episode 31, uh, we talked about what it was like 10 years ago when the 2008 recession hit. And maybe that conversation is more relevant today than it was back in episode 31. We talked about it. We then hit, hit on it again in 43. And that's the fact that, like, hey, when the recession, recession hits, we had a lot of people reach out. And I said, hey, what did you experience? And they reached out, and we had some great conversation around that. And the bottom line with economic ups and downs is like, hey, it just happens, right? It's a part of a, a good economy, the fact that it corrects itself, and that's why it works. 
and we may be looking at that market correction. You know, it's been a bull market for so long, so maybe those episodes are more relevant. But the bottom line is whether the economy's on its way up, on its way down, that there are some things that transcend all of that. And you know my message. Brand equity transcends those ups and downs. Why? They're especially more valuable in a down market because you have less ad dollars to spend, frankly. So when your ad budget goes from $3 million to $1.2, well, you need to make that $1.2 work really hard. And that 1.2 works a lot harder when you've already invested in the brand work and the connection with your community that, oh, look at that. Connection with community loyalty translates to what lower cost for advertising, lower cost for impressions and clicks and all that stuff. Why is that? Because you actually made a connection with people. I've said it 10 times on the show, maybe. I'm going to say it 100 times in 2019, right? A sales conversion equals one sale but a brand conversion equals religion. It's just what we do. So we talked about that. Um, you know, in, in episode 39, I started to ask, hey, what questions do you want me to answer on the show and, uh, or in person? And really that ties us back into the community that we've been building around the show. And it hasn't been just automotive. It's been business people and entrepreneurs and people that just wanna develop, like work on personal growth and development and career development. And the questions, I got to tell you, the DMs lately have been through the roof. I spend a lot of time responding to DMs and messages on LinkedIn and Instagram and Facebook and people that are just having questions about these things. And uh, really, it's, it's fired me up because obviously, I have a brand-first marketing agency. and I want to help organizations through that channel because... I can, and it's effective, and I have a team of amazing, talented, creative professionals to help me do that. On the personal side, I just want to help people move forward, and you know my word, clarity, clarity, and that's kind of a 30,000-foot word, and I get that. I understand that it's difficult sometimes to tie it to you know one, one thing. Clarity, it's an ambiguous word, but the bottom line is in life and in business, things cloud our view the anxieties and the unknowns, and I've been calling that the fog of life. So when people reach out or businesses hire us or engage us, right, I wanna cut through the fog, right, and sometimes that's like a relational truth, like AJ Amex helped us with last, talking about like, where in this triangle do you fit? Or are you making agreements or are you working off of a lot of expectations, right? All of that stuff cuts through the fog of life, right, and starts to part the fog so you can see the next step clearly. So the community that's been developing around that message and around this podcast and around the content is one where people want to pursue that clarity, which is now that it's getting more robust and more people are reaching out and um, and taking that time. And I want to engage my appetite to do that and desire to want to help more organizations and more executives and more individuals increase that has really led to us announcing ClarityCon. 2019, we've announced it. You can sign up to find out exactly what it's going to be, or at least get updates. We haven't defined exactly what it's going to be. Actually, we want to help you. We want to let you help us define that. And we're going to send out a couple, like two, three question surveys, you know, as far as length and format. But if you haven't, go to pursueclarity.com, pursueclarity.com, sign up for the email list. At least you'll be in the know as far as, as developments come. And the intention is that we can deliver some real value to business people and branding or directors of marketing or CEOs and organizational management or entrepreneurs that are trying to like start to build a business with a legacy mindset or people who just want to kind of be more emotionally intelligent so that they can move forward in their career and move forward in their life. So register if you haven't or not register, just sign up for updates. There's going to be like one email a month and it'll probably be text-based. I will write it personally and it'll just be something that we keep you in the loop and you'll know what's going to happen with ClarityCon 2019. So um, man, that's kind of 2018 in a nutshell. It's Christmas. So this is a short podcast. It's just about over, but I, I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you for being part of this. I never would have known this would have come from that initial content series we created around Dale Pollock's book. Actually, I haven't mentioned Dale. Oh my gosh. I'd be, all I can say is that I'm incredibly grateful for Dale Pollack because he had been the source content. Um, his book was the source content for the very beginning. 
and some of you might not know, over the last 10 months, we've actually developed a, a significant relationship where um, we communicate quite a bit. And uh, we, our agency was actually a part of launching some of V Auto's new products. They got a great product coming out called Profit Time. And we've been able to be part of that momentum. So the thesis is that if you create good content and bring value, not just for you know content for content's sake, but content that brings value to other people, and when I say value, I mean something they can execute to. And the faster they can execute to what you create, whether it's a mindset shift or something that can change in their business, the faster that can happen, the more value that that piece of content brings. So we created this, this content, it brought value, it uh, spurred relationships, and especially in this case, a relationship with Dale. And now we're bringing value to the organization specifically. And so we can bring value to the industry at large it all works together. You have to keep swinging the ax. I talk about that all the time. So couldn't sign off without saying, uh, giving Dale props and thanking him uh, for his time, investment, and trust in us and me as we move forward. So 2018, it's in the can after this episode. Thanks for being a part of it. We have a lot more coming in 2019. We already have interviews, books. I'm traveling four times in January. We're gonna be speaking. We're gonna be meeting a ton of people bringing you the results and the things that we learn. And um, 2019 is going to be one to talk about. So enjoy your Christmas. Enjoy your families. Enjoy the rest of this year. And may 2019 be a year where you have more clarity than ever before.